So the PK or the Kate. Kate. Ayun, Kate. Woo! So welcome everyone here to another class for statistics and probability. We're still under chapter one, exploring data, but our lesson for now, it's lesson six, measures of location. The objectives to hit for today are identify the proper measure of location to use, appreciate the importance of providing a sound interpretation for these measures, and calculate, of course, these measures of location. So we all know what's happening around us. The reason why we now have online classes, why we have quarantine, is because of the COVID-19. So the COVID-19 pandemic outbreak has affected the economy, not just our country, but the entire world. During this outbreak, from the news and reports, statistics has been playing a very big role, especially in monitoring and analysis of COVID-19 cases. One of the observations by the experts from the data gathered is the relationship between the age and the probability of being infected. Tabulating the graph, we have this frequency distribution table or FDT. Notice that the highest age bracket is 90 to 99 and the lowest is 0 to 9, with the age brackets of 60 to 69 having the highest number of cases. Tabulating the graph, we have this frequency distribution table. Notice that the highest age bracket is 90 to 99 and the lowest is 0 to 9, with the age brackets of 60 to 69 having the highest number of cases, and ages 90 to 99 having the lowest number of cases. How do you think we can look for the age where that divides the population of 2,365 patients into 505? How about the age where at most 75% of the 2,365 patients are less than or equal to it? So these questions could be answered by knowing the measures of location are sometimes called the measures of position. So you have there three, quartile, decile, and percentile. When we say quartile, it's the measure of location that divides your data set into four equal parts, quarters. In decile, it's the measure of location that divides the data into 10 equal parts. Decile, 10. And then you have percentile, the last one. It's the measure of location that divides the data set into 100 equal parts. So your quartile, decile, and percentile can be illustrated as this. For the quartile, recalling the definition, it is a measure of location that divides the data set into four equal parts. So as shown here, you have quartile 1, quartile 2, quartile 3, and quartile 4, denoted as Q1, Q2, Q3, and Q4. Also, the picture is showing that the median of a data is also the quartile 2, while in relation to percentile, it's the 50th percentile. Quartile 1 is also the same as the 25th percentile, while quartile 3 is the 75th percentile. Note as well that quartile 1 is the median of the lower half, while the quartile 3 is the median of the upper half. In terms of the decile, the 50th percentile, quartile 2, and median is equal to decile 5 or D5. Also, decile 1, D1 is equivalent to percentile 10 or P10, and then you have D2 equivalent to P20, D3 equivalent to P30, up to D10, which is equivalent to P100. Why don't we try some examples? So let's have the first example, the 60th percentile. Your 60th percentile includes the data point where 60% of the entire data is less than or equal to that data point. It also means that 40% of the data is greater than or equal to the same data point. That also applies with your decile and quartile. Now, let's say we have the following scores. The following are the test scores of 11 students. You have 2, 3, 5, 7, 8, 10, 11, 12, 13, 15, and 18. Now, from the scores, we can immediately identify the median because the data are arranged already in an ascending order and the number of students is odd. So, in looking for the median, get your total number of observations, which is 11 plus 1, that's 12, divided by 2, that's 6. So your sixth data is the median. So the sixth data here is 10. Since 10 is the median, we can also say that it is the quartile 2, Q2, the decile 5, D5, and the percentile 50, or P50. 
And then you have there your quartile 1, Q1, which is 5, the median of the lower half. And then your quartile 3, Q3, 13, the median of the upper half. If you have observed, for every quartile and decile, there corresponds an equivalent percentile. So we will only study the formula in solving for the percentile because the computation of the quartile and decile could be coursed through the computation of the percentile. However, you need to remember the different equivalence between the decile percentile and quartile percentile. So given the PK or the kth percentile, how do we compute for this given a data set? So let's say you have this table. These are the test scores of 150 grade 11 students of Quezon City Science High School. This means that there are four students who scored 10. There are five students who scored 16. Those who scored 18 are five students and so on. We can also see that the total or the last computed cumulative frequency is 150, which is also the same as our total number of observations, 150 grade 11 students. So this is the first step in computing for the kth percentile. So you arrange your data values in ascending order of magnitude. You can see here your scores in a long test are arranged from ascending order. You have 10, 16, 18, up to 50. Step two, find the location of PK in the arranged list by computing for L. Your L is equal to K over 100 times N. Recall that N is the total number of observations in the data set, while your k is the kth percentile you are looking for. In example, if you're looking for the 30th percentile, that's going to be k equals 30. The location of pk is equal to 30 over 100 times the total number of observations. In our example, it was 150. So it's going to be 30 over 100 times 150. That is equal to 45. So your 30th percentile is the 45th data in your data set. How about if we're looking for the 75th percentile? So your K is equal to 75. That's going to be 75 over 100 times 150, which is equal to 112.5. So we now have a decimal value. Note that if your data is a sample, use K over 100 times N plus 1. So in our given example, it, it is a population. So for step three, we have your two cases. You have if L is a whole number and if L is not a whole number. So if L is a whole number, PK is the mean or the average of the values in the Lth and L plus 1 position. If it's not a whole number, PK is the value of the next higher position or the next high number. For example, if you have P30, we have computed its location to be the 45th data. So we're going to look for the 45th and 45th plus 1 position, which is 46. So ang ahanapin, 45th and 46th position. And then we are going to get the averages. If it's not the whole number as we have computed before, P75 has a location of 112.5 we are going to look at the 113th position, round it up to the next whole number. As we can see here, the P30 is equal to the location 45. We have looked for the 45th and 45th plus one position or 46. Your 45th and 46th position can be found using the less than cumulative frequency column. So you're going to look there, 49, 14, 29, 48. Recalling, if you have a less than cumulative frequency of 4, it means that 4 data are falling in that first row. If you have 9, that means 9 data are falling in that second row. Okay, so if we have 45th and 46th, we are sure that that location of the data falls under less than cumulative frequency 48. So that means our P30 is 25. We then say that the bottom 30% of the scores are said to be less than or equal to 25, while the top 70% of the observations, which is around, let's say, 105, are greater than 25. How about if we have computed for a decimal value location? So we're going to look at the 113th position, the next whole number, so rounding up, that falls in the less than cumulative frequency row of 116. So our P75 is 38. So if we have here the P75 as 38, that means it's also the decile 7.5 and the quartile 3. So recalling, we have the three measures of location, quartile, decile, and percentile. 
It can be observed as follows. Quartile 1 is the median of the lower half. Quartile 3, the median of the upper half. Quartile 2 is the median of the data set, which is also decile 5 and percentile 50. So that is it for your lesson 6 in chapter 1. Good job. You can now locate data in the data set. <laughs>